Hello game fans, I'm Lord Elemental and welcome to another review from the Steam Chamber. Today we're going to take a look at Monaco, What's Yours Is Mine, which is a pixel art take on the Ocean's Eleven-esque heist genre. Now Monaco is a top-down, four-player heist game. There are up to eight different characters slash classes to choose from and two campaign modes to play through. Now, the aim of the game is to move through the level whilst avoiding or fighting guards, collecting the coins and ultimately collecting the trophy at the end of, end of the level before escaping without losing too many lives. Each of the eight classes has their own special unique powers. For instance, the cleaner can instantly knock out an enemy if they are unaware of him. The mole can dig through walls. The pickpocket has a small monkey that collects coins and the locksmith, rather predictably, can open locks quicker. There are also other mechanics in the game. You can pick up weapons and various other devices. You can pick up guns, you can pick up sleep darts, you can pick up smoke bombs. Uh, these have limited ammo, but for every, I believe it's every 10 coins you pick up, your ammo will replenish throughout the level. Now, there is no set way to complete the levels. You can do it using any technique you wish. You can just run and gun and steam through if you wish, or you can take a more stealthy approach. There are mechanics you can utilize. You can hack various computer systems to turn different security devices off. You can knock out guards. If you're the mole, you can dig straight through walls to ignore certain guards. But of course, then you've also got to give up on your coins as well. And deep down, this game is very much an arcade leaderboard game, so you don't really want to do that when it comes to it. Now, this game has been in development for a while. It started off as a project under one man, Andy Schatz, in 2010. And since then, the team has grown and they've fleshed it out into a fully-fledged game. It's out on Steam this week, and as always, there'll be a link for that down below. Now, this game has been causing quite a stir there's a lot of buzz around this game it's been featuring at a lot of expos such as PAX it's garnered a lot of attention from bigger name sites even though it is a small indie a lot of big reviewers have been looking at it and have covered it in the past now visually this is a great looking game it's done in a pixel art style with a top-down view and it employs a line of sight mechanic which is becoming more and more popular in top-down games uh, recently this is great because it really does add to that sense of jeopardy because you aren't quite, sometimes you really aren't quite sure where the guards are. You know, if you get a quick glimpse of them and then pop back round, you will see their footsteps still within the shroud for a little while, but you will have to check every now and then, unless, of course, you're the lookout who can see guards coming. The game sounds are good and they really do enhance it and they do fit, they fit in really nicely with the, the pixel art style. Same with the, the music. It blends in really nicely, it doesn't really detract too much from the game, but at the same time it's not grating or too repetitive. The game's controls handle really well. I personally played it through on a with a keyboard and mouse, however, other members of the Steam Chamber team like Emiholic and Rage played it through with Xbox controllers and both setups seem to work really well. In fact, everything that's been implemented seems to have been implemented and optimised really, really well. As I say, they've been working on this game for quite some time and they've had the gist of the game down for a while. So I think they've just spent their time honing what they've what they've come up with. You know, it controls really well. The the abilities of the diff eight different classes are really nicely balanced and you can get, you know, you're only allowed four characters at any one time and you've got eight classes, so it's a you get a real nice mix of play styles depending on which characters you're employing. And also who, whoever's controlling them, you know, depends if someone's going to go for a, place, a, a character that suits their play style or not. The multiplayer has also been really well implemented. We didn't have a problem in the slightest in joining. I think there was three of us at any one time. There wasn't a problem joining together. We didn't, never had any like dropout issues, any lag issues. There were no issues of, of not being able to get in the game together. Everything was really easy, really simple. And worked really, really well. This game has been really well thought out and really well put together. They've even added a little story there, story throughout for you. However, you can skip that if you are if you're getting down to the nitty gritty of leaderboards and completion times. 
Ultimately, I think this is a game you're going to have a lot of fun with for a lot of time. As I say, there's leaderboards there. Not only have you got a daily leaderboard, but you've got a, a, an all-time leaderboard as well. So that means there's always something to strive towards. And of course, once you've completed the two campaigns that are included, you can just go back and play them through with the newer characters that you've unlocked throughout the game. As I believe you start off with two characters at the very start, one character at the very start. So you can go back through the older levels and play them through with new characters, whether you're on a single in a single player or you're in a multiplayer. Now another nice feature of the game is that it not only has it got the online multiplayer, but you also have a lo local multiplayer. So you can plug in up to three controllers into your PC and have another person on the keyboard and mouse and therefore actually play local games of four player, which is a really nice addition actually. And it's not something a lot of games do, and it's something I've yet to try, but do plan on trying at some point in the future. This is one of those games that's good fun on your own, however, with a group it's immensely fun, especially when you've got someone who's constantly setting off alarms like myself. I'm sure the guys will tell you. But like I said before, it's a pixel art, Ocean's Eleven, and it will keep you entertained for absolute hours. As always, thank you for watching the video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, as it really does help us get the word out there to more people. Thank you.